I'm going to show you how to use blends to create a cool 1980s text effect that looks like rainbow text, kind of neon rainbow text. So we're going to get our type tool first and we're going to draw a text box by clicking and dragging across our document. You want a pretty big um, font here and you want it to be very simple. So Futura, Helvetica, Arial, all of those will work. I'm just in Futura and I'm going to type something very 80s, totally rad. In fact, I'm going to type that again without it being in all caps. Um, so once we have this, we want to expand this because we don't want it to be text anymore. We want it to be um, just a vector graphic. We want it to have a stroke and a fill. So we're going to draw a box using our selection tool, this black arrow, over the top of our text. Then go to Object, Expand. You want to have Object and Fill both selected. So if you don't see that, check both of those and then hit OK. All right, so now we want to do a couple of things. I'm going to go ahead and select all of this text and then align it in the center. Um, the other thing that I want to do is I want to change this from a fill with no stroke, which you can see down here, to uh, no fill with a stroke. So I'm just going to use my little swap fill and stroke here. If you need to, you can go ahead and just select your fill and then select none and then select your stroke and make it black. All right, so now I'm ready to start preparing for my blend. Um, whenever you create a blend, you're basically taking two different objects and then telling the software that you want them to blend those two objects by creating different steps in between. So it could be a solid blend, it could be many different steps, it could be just one step in between, and you can kind of determine that on your blend options. Um, but since we're creating rainbow text, if I were to just take like red up here and purple down at the bottom, um, the software would not know that I want it to be multiple rainbow colors in between. They would just know that I was going to be blending from the red to the purple. So we have to create at least probably six copies of this totally rad to make it rainbow. So to do that, it's very simple. We're going to go to our selection tool. We're going to select totally rad. Hold down our option key until you see the black and white arrow here and then click and drag Hold down the shift key so that you get that perfectly aligned down below the original totally rad. Now you can have a little overlapping here and that looks okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and draw a box over both of these because I'm going to duplicate these two more times so that I have six copies. So I'm going to hold down the option key again, click and drag, hold my shift key down. And I want this to be about the same distance as the first overlap. So you'll notice these are kind of overlapping in the same spot. And it's it's okay if it's not perfect as long as it's pretty close. All right, so there we go. I've got six copies of my Totally Rad. I'm going to select over all of those and then kind of move them down so they're somewhat centered. And again, that doesn't have to be perfect, um, but we just want them lower. The last thing we're going to do is go to the top Totally Rad here, hold our option key down, and just copy one more of these out and kind of leave it by itself up here at the top. Okay, so now we can start coloring these and because it's going to be a rainbow, we're going to start here with our colors and choose red. Now the one thing you want to make sure before you start choosing these two is that your stroke is on the top of these two options here that you don't have your fill on the top, that your stroke is overlapped here. Um, so now I can go in and I can choose red choose kind of an orange, choose yellow, green, blue, and finally kind of a violet color here. And you know what, that's a little close to the original blue, so I like that a little bit better. Now you can also see over here in my navigator tool what's happening. You don't have to have your navigator open, but I like to sometimes when I'm working in Illustrator, because if you draw um, a selection over the top now, you can see that it's very difficult to see these colors, but you can still see them over here in your navigator. So there's a couple different ways that you can blend things. You can use the blend tool. That's probably not going to be the best option for this, but I will show you how to use it. When you use the blend tool, you want to select the things that you want to blend. And actually, I'm just going to select these bottom two totally rads. 
Then the blend tools over here, the keyboard shortcut is W. And when you select the first thing that you want to blend, you'll see that the blend tool cursor has a little star off to the side or a little asterisk. When you click that, you're kind of setting that as your first blend. And then you'll go up to your second blend object and there'll be a little plus and you'll select that and a blend will be created in between those two sections. Now you'll see that the blend has just created one extra totally rad. If I wanted to edit that, I could go to Object, Blend, Blend Options, and I could do more than one step. So I could do three steps, and you can see that just adds more um, totally rads in between those first two. I'm gonna go ahead and hit cancel and then do a command Z uh, a couple times to walk this back because the best way of doing a blend for something as simple as this where I have all of these totally rads perfectly aligned is just to go through my menu. So I'm gonna select all of these totally rads and I'm going to go to object, blend, make. And you can see now all of these have kind of blended up. Now, if I'm happy with this, I can stop at this point. If I want to edit it, I can also go back to Object Blend, Blend Options, and I can choose if I want it to be specified steps, if I want it to be a smooth color, if I want it to be a specified distance. And if you hit Preview, you should be able to see what that's going to look like. That's Actually, that's really fun. I could go into my specified steps and increase those. If you uncheck and then recheck your preview, that will allow you to kind of see what you're doing. Notice this does not show up in your navigator though until you've actually hit okay and then it will. And if you want to see this in your navigator or if you just want to um, check it, you can always hit okay and then do a command Z if you don't like it and you can go back and make an, a change. So that's fine. Um, so I'm kind of liking this here. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK and then click back onto my text. Now this is really cool, but it's almost impossible to read at this point. So that's why we've created this extra totally rad up at the top. Um, with this, we want to go ahead and add a fill as well because we're going to pull this on top of our original text and we do not want to see through this because we want it to kind of be that first word that everything else is kind of radiating out from. So we're just going to click on the fill, set it to white, and then we'll go ahead and move this down on top, holding the shift key. You can even do that. Now the only problem here, it looks like we don't have a fill and that's just because this totally rad is on the bottom of all of these other objects. So what we need to do is go to object, arrange, and bring to front. The keyboard shortcut for that is command shift closed bracket. Voila, you've got a totally rad rainbow kind of 80s effect. One last thing you can do is draw a box over this, do a command G to group it. And now when you click on this, you can align it in the center, you can align it horizontally, and then that will kind of, you know, give you that centered look with your text as well. All right, enjoy creating some rainbow 80s text.